Welcome to Murfreesboro Storyteller. Our guest for today's program is Alan Farley, Administrator of Elections for County of Rutherford. Alan, welcome. Well, thank you, John. Glad to be here. Glad to be a part of this. Well, you've been involved with the Election Commission in one way or another for a number of years. I believe you were a member of the commission at one time. Yes, sir. Back in the 90s and, and early part of 2000, I served on the Election Commission. And uh, so it was a good, a lot of good experience and, and uh, just a different kind of different side of what we do here in the Election Commission. How many members are there of the commission? There are five members. Uh, there's uh, the state appoints three from the majority party and two from the minority party. Okay. So they are appointed by the state, then, by the governor? By the, well, by the state well, election by commission. The, oh, the election commission, I see. Yes, okay. right. Alan, this is a busy election year for, for your uh, office and for the election commission. We thought it'd be interesting to talk about some of the things that are going on to conduct elections. I'm sure that's changed a bit over the recent years. It has, and I, I'm, I hear stories, and this is a little before my time. Okay. But I know you were a very local historian, but mm -hmm. I, I bet you remember the days of the metal ballot boxes and sure do. the chalkboard out on the square. Martin Drugstore, yes. T uh, tallying the, the tallies. So, uh, yeah, it has changed quite a bit over the years. And uh, sometimes it'd be good to kind of go back to those, those ways. But. Well, let me tell you how far back I do go. <laughs> My father was executive uh, secretary of the Rutherford County Democratic Party. And he conducted the elections back in those days. And growing up, I sat all night with the election returns being counted manually in the courthouse wow. and then finally get home at two or three o'clock in the morning. And then as you say, later on we had the uh, election board on the uh, in front of the Martin, uh, I guess it was Carr and Martin drugstore on the square. Mm -hmm. So things have changed a bit over the years. It has changed. And now um, this past election in May with uh, the vote centers, which is a new component that we're doing, we started this year with okay. the change in the law. Uh, we were actually finished and out the door at nine o'clock on election night. And poor I, Bart Walker, I, when I left, he was actually on the sidewalk doing interviews. I said, well, if I'd have known he still had some interviews to do, we wouldn't have locked up, but we were done, ready to go home. So he was outside, you, he done was, that quickly. That's it good. was done that quickly. Okay. Uh, you know, we have uh, the vote centers now allow voters the convenience of voting uh, at any of the locations okay. that we have on election day. Explain the term vote center. Is that just anywhere that somebody can vote? Correct. We, what we in the past we had voting precincts, which okay. we still have, like Hopgood School or Mitchell Nielsen School. Right. Okay. What they what they do is in those polling locations that we've done is you had you were assigned a location. Okay. Well, so your voter card told you that you needed to vote at Hopgood School. Well, under the new format, just like early voting, early voting okay. that we have, you can vote at any of those locations during that 15 day period. Okay. Well, what we've done is taken that format and said, well, if we can do that for 15 days of early voting, why can't we do this on election day? Sure. So we got the, uh, the, the law changed to allow us to be a pilot program for okay. the state. And so what we've done is instead of having 49 locations, we now have 28. Okay. Uh, by law, we're supposed to have 17 based off the number of voters that we have. But we make sure that all of our rural communities have uh, a, a vote center location. Plus, we have one in all 21 county commission okay. districts. And so that way, um, you know, people, if you happen to be going to work uh, or at lunchtime, someone who maybe lives in Kitchell but works in Laverne, mm -hmm. at lunchtime they can go ahead and, and, um, and stop in and vote in Laverne. We actually had a situation that was shared with us back in May. Uh, a gentleman was leaving to go to Knoxville. He lives uh, at the very farthest point west uh, there in Arrington, uh, out okay. in, in the Amable Arrington community. Well, he ended up casting his vote in Milton. When on he, the way to Knoxville. On the way to Knoxville. When he left it, before 7 o'clock, the polling locations were not open. Okay. So he happened to think, wait a minute, I read something in the paper. So he pulls into Milton thinking he could vote, but wasn't for sure. So he got to vote, and then he went on his way. So, uh, so that's that's the intent, you know, with that. Or people who work in Nashville trying to get back and forth uh, before, you know, because you have to leave before the polls open to, to get there on yeah. time. So hopefully, there, you know, those people have a chance to vote when they come back uh, across the county line. They can stop Smyrna Laverne and vote. Are we the only county under that uh, change of law? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we're actually the pilot, so we're we've conducted the the. The format. Okay. And so what we've done is we've worked with the Secretary of State's Office, the Division of Elections, 
uh, and that our commission has established the guidelines. And then uh, we've had three elections, and all three elections have gone very smoothly. And so it's something that's going to be a change of uh, change that will go through the other parts of the state. I'm sure it will, certainly. At one time, we talked about uh, extending the early voting all the way up to and through Election Day. But you still don't do that, do you? No, sir. Uh, we have uh, 20 days pr um, prior to the election okay. day. We start early voting, and then it goes for 15 days, and then you have a five-day in, uh, in between from the last day of early voting to election day. What that do does is it allows us to go ahead and make sure that we've got everything compiled, mm -hmm. ready to go, because we, we could do that. Okay. But one of the things in the discussion of this new law is, is that if we went ahead and did that, we're getting five extra days of voting, whereas the other 94 counties are not. So that does okay. give Rutherford County a, a more of an advantage. So you know that may be something that could be the next step. Sure. We don't know. But just in this pilot program, we're just doing it the same format okay. uh, as everybody else. And that would be something that may look at doing later on. What percentage of uh, residents of voters uh, vote uh, in early voting? In our presidential election 2016, we ended up having close to 60% of the people voted early. We had 110,000 uh, people cast ballots in okay. that election. And we had we voted um, um, over, right at 80,000 uh, people voted early, early okay. in that election. So uh, I would say that's probably a little more than, than 60%. But on average, mm -hmm. on average, it runs between 55 and 60%. What percentage of the people are registered to vote? Uh, well, we have 162,000 registered voters okay. in the county, and of course, the population in the county um, is right around 315, so 320,000. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but then you have to take out the people that are under 18. Okay. Um, so, we, I think we're we're pretty much uh, on par with the na with the national average. Okay. All right. Tell us about conducting an election. How many people does it take? to conduct a, the election in all the polls? <laughs> well, I tell you, the, the biggest thing is is the people that we have that are part of the election day process, you know, the poll workers that mm -hmm. we have. You know, there's there's seven people in our office. Okay. And it would be nice to say that seven people could, could vote 110,000 oh, yeah. people mm -hmm. in our presidential election, but that's impossible. Sure. Uh, but we have people that are, that are uh, very civic-minded, and we have people that um, this community means a lot to them, and mm -hmm. so, so we're glad that they, I'll say volunteer their time. There's a small stipend that goes mm -hmm. into it, but, um, but yeah, we, on average, the old format uh, with the precincts and the 49 locations, a countywide election, we would, it would take right around 400 to 450 people. Uh, under the new format, uh, where we're being able to okay. consolidate, better utilize our equipment, better uh, uh, utilize our, uh, be more efficient with mm -hmm. our staffing. Um, you know, 250 to 300 people uh, is what we have to, to, to be able to pull off a, a countywide election. A, a much smaller number then. Yes, okay, sir. very yes, good. Sir. The early voting is conducted not only in the election commission headquarters, but in other outlying precincts, right? But not every precinct. Well, we have, we have six um, satellite locations, mm -hmm. plus our office here uh, on the square. And uh, so we have seven total sites on a countywide election. Okay. Uh, we have the one here on the square. We have Vine Street at our warehouse. Uh, Sportscom. Uh, Sportscom and our office on the square seems to be the two right. that draws a lot Major. of a, uh, the most uh, uh, traffic. And then, of course, we have Smyrna Laverne, uh, Smyrna City Hall, okay. Laverne, a multi-purpose uh, uh, building, which is behind the Laverne City Hall. Uh, we also added... Um, the uh, on the south side of the city or the county, uh, out of South Church and that area, which is a booming area sure. pop, uh, population wise, <clears throat> we added uh, the realtors building out there. They they have a, a, a nice room that they rent, right. so they're so kind and generous to be able to provide that for us during early voting. Uh, so that allows that area out there from having their closest was Vine mm -hmm. Street or the Square. Of course, what's the t biggest premium? At Vine Street, or on the square, it's parking. Oh yeah. And so, uh, so this allowed them to go ahead and have something some more closer. So that's been a great. So that's been our seventh uh, site that we've added here in the last couple of years, and 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 is getting a lot of more um, okay. voting traffic 
each election. When Smyrna or Laverne or Eagleville have a special election for their mayor or their council, you conduct that also? Yes, sir. We, uh, the, um, with the change in Murfreesboro back in uh, 2016, all municipal elections are piggyback onto okay. uh, county, um, countywide elections. Okay. So we have the Murfreesboro municipal election in August. Okay. And then we have Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagleville in November. Okay. All right. So that way it doesn't cost the cities, uh, you know, the, the expense of those, those elections. That's actually shared with, with the county. What does it cost to conduct a countywide election? Have any idea of the, the amount? Uh, ballpark is right about a hundred to one hundred ten thousand dollars to be able to okay. do a countywide um, a countywide election. I just noticed in the city of Nashville when they avoided a runoff election, it was stated they saved a million dollars. With with the size of Nashville and their population and the, the number of precincts, that's not surprising. Okay, that's that's not imagine. surprising. Yeah, we're we're actually the uh, we're soon to be the fourth largest county in the state. So, but we're that still goes to show you we're still. Uh, maybe we're just a little more efficient. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about True Blue Voter. We have the banner here behind us. Well, one of the things that, that uh, uh, Chairman Smith, Steve Smith, the board of trustee chairman out at the university, contacted me and wanted to, you know, come up with a process, a way to get more student engagement. Okay. Uh, and the election process, and and um, I had just gotten some information uh, through a national study that colleges and universities participate in. And it only showed that 3% of our student population uh, participated by absentee. Of course, with, with a, a growing, vibrant uh, university with, you know, um, all over Middle Tennessee and the state, sure. um, we, have, we have students who come in from, from Shelby and, and Madison County out West Tennessee and mm -hmm. up uh, Knox and, and um, Washington County in East Tennessee asking, you know, questions about voting. So we said the ideal thing would be is let's, let's educate them on the, the absentee mm -hmm. process. And this is something that we do in our area high schools is we go and, and we um, take part in, in registering seniors uh, okay. their senior year. And uh, so in doing that, we educate them on the absentee process because if they go off to school, biggest thing is you have to be either vote in person the first time or you have to register in person. Okay. So, uh, so if you didn't do that, well then your absentee ballot request would be denied. So by what we're doing is we're working with the customs, which is the orientation, uh, and doing that. And then of course in the fall, we'll work with the um, uh, process, absentee process, and uh, they're on campus. So hopefully we'll get that number up where there's more people participating. Uh, we have a gubernatorial election this November, so hopefully some of those folks will participate. And that was, that was kind of the brainchild of, um, uh, of Chairman Smith. Yeah, very good. Speaking of the gubernatorial election, MTSU will be the scene for the debate of the two candidates in the gubernatorial election. It'll be held on the campus on September the 20th. So that's a repeat of something that took place, I think, eight years ago. That's good. I, I was not aware of that. That's, yeah, that's okay. good. That's good. So that, that'll also get more involvement, hopefully, from the MTSU community, if you yeah. will. Well, um, Rutherford County is actually, you know, um, is kind of in the forefront. You know, we're, we're actually leading the effort in the Boat Center project here in the state which all 94 counties are kind of looking at us. And, and of course, um, part of the with technology that's advancing in elections now, uh, cybersecurity is very important. And uh, so I had the opportunity to be invited uh, by the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard oh, wonderful. Uh, to take part in developing a playbook uh, on cybersecurity. So, uh, so it was part of that and went up and actually worked um, with, with them in, in establishing that and also doing a tabletop exercise with people, election officials from all 50 states. And so we got to spend a little over a week up there uh, training, educating mm -hmm. uh, them and working with them. And so now it's a, it's a, it's a playbook that's, that's kind of been rolled out to all 50 states. Oh, right. So so Rutherford County has always seemed to be in the, the middle of, uh, of, of uh, advancement of elections. So that's, uh, that's, that's great. great. That's great. Tell us about cybersecurity. Is it, that's becoming more and more of a problem, I presume? Well, it's one of those things you always, just like with your financial information and everything now, you want to be one, two steps ahead sure. of, of, um, of everybody. And it can be somebody who is, um, you know, a hacker. You know, it could be a 12-year-old kid, or it could be uh, a foreign actor from, from, from an, another country. Right, sure. Uh, so the main thing is, is just making sure that we're protected uh, with um, 
you know, the, the software protection that we need and kind of um, being more advanced and making sure we're doing the things internally to make sure that we're holding secure elections. Okay. Tell us about your staff, Alan. I believe you mentioned seven members earlier. Have seven members on our staff, and uh, they uh, a lot of experience, mm -hmm. uh, but they do a wonderful job. And what we've done is we've kind of we've we've modeled everything to where we're looking at skill sets and said, okay, elections have changed, like we talked about sure. uh, over the years. So you have technology, which is a part. So we have someone who helps oversee our technology. Of course, absentee voting is very important. We have an absentee coordinator, then of course our recruiter uh, and our training uh, uh, coordinator. So we have everybody has a certain role and responsibility okay. that they that they fulfill. And but we have a wonderful staff here, and uh, you know working with candidates when they come in wanting to to uh, you know pick up their qualifying papers and and go through that process, uh, filing financial disclosures. So there's always seems to be activity going on okay. around here in election time and our staff do a wonderful job. Talk about the potential candidate who wants to uh, run for an office. Now, again, go back and tell us what they have to go through and, and, the, and you handle that here at this office as well, don't you? Yes, and what we do is we put out a notice um, prior to each election uh, that comes available. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is, is there's a time frame that actually will change because it was 90 days prior to a uh, qualifying deadline that you had to pick up but they, the General Assembly changed that this, this okay. session. So 60 days, two months prior to the qualifying deadline um, that a candidate uh, can pick up qualifying papers. So what that is, is they have to go and they have to get 25 signatures of sure. registered voters, okay. uh, either in the county, if it's countywide, if it's a district election, 25 inside that district. And then they bring them back and we verify, certify that, that um, so that qualifies them to be on the ballot. Okay. And uh, so it's di different deadlines throughout the year, depending on which election uh, that they're wanting to participate in. You mentioned they have to pick up the papers. They can pick up the papers 60 days before the qualifying deadline. Yes, sir. How far uh, b before the election is the qualifying deadline? <clears throat> Typically, it's, it's right around three months before okay. the election, because what you have is like in our August election that's coming up, okay. that qualifying deadline was the third Thursday in uh, April. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, May primary was actually the qualifying deadline was in, uh, was in February, February 5th. Okay. So the, typically they fall the third Thursday, this is by statute, third Thursday of the third month prior to the election okay. on average. What's your biggest challenge in, in the office in conducting elections and carrying on your day-to-day -day routines? Biggest challenge, I would say, would be um, the staffing, you know, the, the 300, 400 people that we may yes, need. Yes, right. Uh, because everybody lives busy lives. You know, we don't live in a, a uh, nine to five society anymore. Yeah, that's um, for sure. And so people are busy, people are active. Uh, so making sure, you know, we have an August election coming up that uh, you know it's vacation time it's right before school starts and uh, so so this so that would be that would be probably our biggest challenge is, is making sure that we have enough people and we've been very blessed we have had um, mm -hmm. that we've got a great partnership with our Rutherford County school system okay. uh, with our uh, you know, teachers and, and, and such uh, because schools are closed and so that's an excellent opportunity for them and for us and uh, so that's our biggest, that would be our biggest challenge. That's a pretty long day too for somebody serving on election day. Isn't it, it is, you know, they get started uh, about 5.45, 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then um, they, by the time they finish up and get everything closed out, you know, it could be an easy 14 hour day. Okay. Tell us about the qualifications for the administrator of elections. Well, uh, you know, of course, having a background in elections is, is very important. Sure. That way you kind of understand the voter side, the candidate side, the, uh, um, you know, the people that you come in contact mm -hmm. with. But uh, I'm, I'm actually certified. Uh, what I equate it to is kind of you have to pass the bar of election law, okay. uh, so to speak. Uh, you know, it's a, it was a, it was a four hour test um, mm. and it, and uh, the group that I took it with, we took all every every minute of the four, oh, the four hours, hours uh, uh, such. So it's very very extensive uh, going in and knowing uh, what the laws are, kind of okay. what the what the you know because every everything has its little intricacies. So kind of knowing those things as well. 
uh, part of the law. So some of the things are very common you come across all the time. I'm but sure. then there's those few instances where you don't. So you, but you've got to know those too. So, okay. so that, that really is the biggest thing. And so by doing that, um, which is required now to be a certified uh, administrative elections by, by the state. Now, do you, you have a term of office that you're in this job? Or you're, it's, it's just an ongoing? Uh, it's ongoing. Yeah. I serve at the pleasure of our, our five election, election commissioners. commissioners. Okay. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. good. Tell us about some of the more interesting things that, that you've had to uh, confront during election time or unusual situations. <laughs> well, you know, you always get uh, strong-willed people <laughs> uh, that, 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 that feel very passionate about their candidate. Sure. Um, and kind of an interesting story that I share is um, the one of my first elections I, I had <clears throat> was during early voting, and I had uh, one of our officers at one of our early voting sites call and said, Alan, you need to come down to the um, warehouse. We have a, a problem. And I said, okay. I said, what is it? <laughs> they said, well, we have a... Uh, recent retired Navy SEAL okay. um, who's here to vote, but he's not registered to vote. And he says he's not leaving until he votes. Okay. And I thought, okay, somebody who's just recently retired from the military, Navy SEAL, <laughs> I've got to go tell him he can't <laughs> vote. When, and so we, so I'll go in and he was very, um, very easy to pick out of the, of the oh, group. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> And so I, I, I said, well, come back here, let's, let's talk. I wanted to make sure that if, uh, uh, if there's an altercation, I didn't want to see nobody. And he was a recent retiree, right? <laughs> yes, sir. He, he, was, he was a young fellow, um, okay. and he was in, in quite physical shape, too. I understand. And uh, so, but, you know, kind of talking to him, he had just recently moved here from uh, Sumner County. Okay. And uh, he said, well, I, I, you know, I know I registered when I, when I moved. I just moved, you know, um, a month ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Sumner County, I said, "Hold on." By knowing the election laws, that you know, we talked about. Well, I said, sure. "Hold on." I think I have a solution here. And I said, uh, "Are you are you still registered in Sumner County?" He said, "Well, yeah, as far as, if, as, far as I know." Yeah. So I called Sumner County, and they said, "Yeah, he's registered right here." Well, under the law, he could go back there and vote because he's within a window oh. um, of, that, of that 60 days. Even though he's living here, but he could yes. go back and vote yeah. there. So, because what happens is if there's, if there's an overlap there, okay. he could go, by law, he could go back there and vote. I said, well, here's the thing. <clears throat> the good news is you're gonna get to vote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news is you're gonna have to go back to Sumner County. Okay. He says, I don't care. He said, I'll drive to Bristol, but I'm, go I'm gonna vote. Oh, bless his heart. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, so it worked out, and, and we shook hands, and he, he jumped in his truck, and he went to Sumner County and was able to vote in the presidential election, and, um, or maybe it was a gubernatorial, I can't remember Whatever. which one yeah. it was. But, but, uh, but so it, that outcome come out. Sometimes they don't come out that good. I understand. Uh, but, uh, but that was one that was kind of funny that uh, I thought, if I'm going to get back, <laughs> I don't have to wrestle a, 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 a Navy SEAL there on um, determining whether he's going to get the vote or not. But that's one of the funny stories there. But but uh, but dealing with candidates, people who have a vision, who have an idea of wanting to 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 serve our community, um, which that's that's the important sure. part of that is, is because we're we're a community of ideas. You know, there's ideas we agree that I may personally agree with, and I don't agree with. But the personal um, opinions and thoughts they're irrelevant because it's about the process. Mm -hmm. The process is what's very very important that we make sure that we um, work with all candidates and political parties and, and voters um, and, uh, and determining, you know, some people come in with, have a, they have a referendum issue that they want to discuss. Mm -hmm. And my job is basically is to tell them, okay, this is under the law, this is the avenues that you have. Uh, and helping them, well, sometimes they, they, they never come to fruition, but at least they know what their parameters are they have to work with. And sometimes they do, so, but it's up to, up to them and the will of the people to determine, you know, um, our government and, and our process. Any other stories that you have a recollection of in addition to the Navy SEAL? Well, and the, um, you know, we had probably the closest election that I've uh, ever been associated with was, um, I had been appointed, but I was not administering the election, Okay, was the um, congressional race here that came down to 38, 38 votes. Uh, between 
Congressman Desjardins and Senator uh, Tracy. Tracy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I was here you know, just votes, observing. I've forgotten how Thirty-eight close votes, and and uh, and so, and I tell our people when we go through training every election, you know, everybody thinks, okay, well, one mistake. Well, that's just one mistake. Oh, but if wrong. everybody makes one mistake, yeah. and at that point in time there were forty-nine locations. That could have changed the outcome of a federal election. Could very well. So you know, every every you know, we keen held. Well, that's just one mistake. Uh, but uh, but so we've closed up and we were done. And of course, I think it, both candidates had declared victory. And well, I get my cell phone call. It was about a little before midnight, and it was our Secretary of State, and and uh, which I thought was kind of odd. And he said, Alan. He said. Um, it's Trey. I said, hey. He said, yeah. Trey Hargett. Yeah, Trey Hargett. He goes, i got a question. I said, <laughs> he said, how many provisional ballots did y'all have? And I said, uh, well, we had 14. And provisional ballots so are... So what is a... Pro uh, provisional ballot is when you come to vote and you may not have an ID. Okay. So you've got, you've got two days to come back and produce okay. your ID, but you're able to vote. Okay. Okay. And that's an orange ballot. Well, then you have a green ballot where you say you registered maybe through the Department of Safety, okay. but we didn't get it. So we go back and we research that so we determine whether the vote counts or doesn't count. Uh, but at least you're able to cast your vote and be determined at, at a later time. And I said, well, 14. He said, okay. I said, why? He goes, well, he said, this race may come down to provisional ballots. Oh, boy. And I'm like, oh. So <laughs> two days later, you know, we sort through out of those 14, two ballots are going to be counted. Okay. So everybody's here wanting to see how those two yeah, ballots I'm are sure. coming. Well, neither ballot was cast for either of the two candidates that were within that close margin. There was, was uh, um, uh, I guess, other uh, candidates that were on the ballot, but were not, um, you know, factors in that uh, that uh, that uh, that outcome. So you know, to come, to get that phone call that late at night, going, okay, how many did you have? Because this election sure. may come. It was sure. was an interesting. Exactly. Uh, was, very interesting um, uh, night as well. So you're able to satisfy the Secretary of State Trey Hargett. Then. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But uh, you know, there's uh, there's always instances where um, you know you take a lot of uh, pride in people coming in, and, and, and our poll workers do a great job yeah, of this. Sure. Yeah. Is person coming in voting for the first time? Yeah. And because you know, they're always, you know, kind of very proud when they give that, you know, yes, idea. Hey, this is my first yeah. time voting, and so, you know, that's that's a big part of that too, especially young people. I'm sure because we've got to find a way to get more people involved, uh, especially our, our young people. And that was one reason why we had the I true think that's blue a great, great effort right there. Uh -huh. It's just the education part, sure. and some of the things that we we hear about with um, being in high schools is that a lot of students. And some of our some of our um, you know top uh, you know central magnet students. Mm -hmm. I mean some others <clears throat> they don't really understand the process, but sure. they feel like that. Well, I don't want to ask that question because I should know this. Yeah. So they don't ask. So we use it as an opportunity to say, hey, you know, this is how the process works. And so trying to find that, but but sure. getting that first time voter is always a lot of fun sure. and uh, great situation there with with our poll workers and kind of cheering them on and you know sometimes the big thing now is the selfie you know Justin yeah. Timberlake you know kind of got in some yeah. trouble with that but but you know they take their selfie with you know uh, outside the, with their little sticker you know we with oh, yeah. the people that yeah. vote I voted sticker which is and that's that's a hot item don't run out one thing I found out don't, don't run out of I voted stickers because people people want those. Alan thank you so much for the great job you're doing as administrator of elections for uh, Rutherford County. We appreciate you very much. Well, I appreciate that, but we've just got a wonderful staff and wonderful team that works well together. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Alan Farley, our Administrator of Elections, has been our guest for Murfreesboro Storyteller. On next month's episode of Murfreesboro Storytellers, we travel to Beatty Farms, The Grove, to find out more about agriculture in Rutherford County.